It has not been above freezing this week, and so I've spent most of my time right here. It hasn't gotten below zero yet, so that's a positive, at least. This is my latest composition for choir called Nothing Gold Can Stay, and here it is in the computer. And we could have a very philosophical debate as to whether or not something needs to be performed in order to be a composition, but that's not what I'm here to talk about today. I have been messing around with my composition workflow here recently, uh, mostly just to help me think through every step of the process. And in the midst of that, I have been thinking a lot about this debate that goes around the composition community, which is, is it better to compose with paper or computer? To many in the older generation, they didn't have computers when they were growing up. And so writing on a computer is completely foreign to them. But to those in the younger generation, it's completely native. That's all they've ever known. But for me in this weird middle generation, I grew up wanting to compose on a computer, but I was told it was going to be harmful to the composition process. I'm in that generation that started off with cassettes and then moved to CDs. And you know from a previous video that I still use my second generation iPod. The institutions where music is taught have a propensity towards paper, being that many of the professors in these institutions got their start before widespread use of technology. And so they have spent the majority, if not their entire careers, on paper. So today, let's talk about the use of technology in composition. And as you might can imagine, both systems have their pros and cons. Hi there. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. Hi, this is a place where I hope that we can learn to be better composers and musicians together. And that's why I have developed a collection of composition resources that are available on my website that I think that you'll find quite useful. One of the favorites that I've put together is a interactive PDF. It's got the entire composition process from ideation to final score. It's got additional resources linked in it, 16 of them, I think, and that is down in the description below. So yeah, make sure to check that out. Let's get back to it. Here's the thing, this pen is a technology and a piano is technology, and if you play Settlers of Catan, you know that paper is a technology. Our brains are the only thing in the composition process that wasn't invented at some point. Let's go in chronological order, and I know that this isn't going to be every strength and every weakness of each of these resources, so feel free to put what I missed down in the comments. So one of the nice things about paper is that I can start anywhere that I want, and I can go anywhere I want from there. So I have that sort of freedom of space. I have flexible choices. Nothing is, in a sense, wrong at this stage. And what I, what I mean by that is that there are no restrictions. I can write down whatever I want. You want a measure of 36.7? Sure, go for it. You want all of your quarter notes to be green? Absolutely. You want to leave yourself little notes in the margin? Go for it. And that makes things a lot less linear. And that's really helpful for the idea of write what you know first. I don't have to start with measure one over here. I can go anywhere in the piece that I want to at any time. Paper is also really good at abstract thought. I can write down uh, a rhythm with no pitches. I can write down just a gesture, a shape. I can also write down little notes to myself that are important, but don't necessarily ever need to go into a computer. Obviously, its drawbacks is that it has none of the advantages of a computer. Second, composers are not known for great penmanship. I don't know how many notes that I've left for myself that I couldn't read later. Very unhelpful. Paper also doesn't have audible feedback, so if I've stuck five quarter notes in a measure of 4-4 without realizing it, this isn't going to tell me. And especially if you're, if you're working with complex and dense textures, it would be very helpful to be able to hear those. And yeah, there's a lot to be said about developing your ear and what all you can read from the page and hear in your head, but still, a lot of these textures are just too dense and complex to hear in your head. So the pros of composing with a piano is that it gives you a very wide harmonic range. You can put your fingers on it, and that's another thing. It's kinesthetic. I should have mentioned this earlier when we were talking about pen, but I just I really like the feel of being able to write something down. So the piano, in a similar manner, is also very kinesthetic. Something that can be a pro or a con about composing on piano, if you're writing on the piano for the piano, this can really help you figure out whether or not something is playable, whether or not you can put your fingers there and physically play it. And that's a good thing. 
But if you're writing on piano for something that's not a piano, you can end up playing something that seems really easy for piano, but is either really difficult or entirely impossible on another instrument, which is less than positive. Which leads me to the biggest con for the piano, which is that it leads you to writing piano-specific sounds slash idioms. And that's why these things are nice, because you can patch in any other instrument or any other sample library you want, but I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll talk about this in a second. The piano is ultimately a string instrument. You hit a key, which is attached to a hammer, which strikes a string, which then vibrates, and strings, by their very nature, decay rather quickly even if you have the sustain pedal down. And this might lead you to compensate by filling what you perceive to be empty space. But if it's going to be played by something like a clarinet, a violin, these can sustain their sound a lot better than a piano, and they don't need that sort of compensation. The advantages of writing on software are that I can quickly cycle through a whole bunch of different things, and I can experiment with a couple of different options in rapid succession and see which one I like the best. I can quickly try different orchestrations. I can lay down one track and then another, which is something that you can't do on a piano. I get immediate feedback, and depending on the quality of your sample library, I can get a better representation for all of the instruments. These can make really good mock-ups for clients or competitions or even SoundCloud. And for a lot of us that don't have access, this can be the best way for us to experiment and get better at writing for orchestra. The drawbacks, there are a lot of them, how often have you just hit play and you listen back through what you did last time and then you're like, I don't know where to go from there. And so you just keep listening back to it and you're like, ah, oh, yes, I'm getting things done. But you're really not. There are a lot of decisions that are made for you by default. If you open up any of your softwares, it probably defaults to something like C major in 4-4 at probably 120 beats a minute. If you have an idea, it's easy to override that. But if you don't, you might just go with it. One of my biggest problems with this is that it forces you to work linearly from measure one, and then you need to know every measure from left to right. And that's hardly ever the case. If I'm working on a sketch, I might not know how long I want that passage to be, how many measures it's going to be, or even where in the piece it's going to go. And then we get into the specific drawbacks of using notation software. A lot of them are going to have this sort of playback compensation, where the sample library isn't quite as fleshed out as it needs to be, and the trumpets are like way louder, even if they're at marked piano, and the flutes are like super soft, even if they're at fortissimo. And so you end up uh, compensating for the software by changing your dynamic markings so that it sounds blended to you in the software, and that's not how any player would play it. And to that point, the software has no regard for human limitations. You can punch in notes that instruments just don't have. You can punch in chords for pianos that would be impossible for human fingers to get to. And of course, I think the biggest problem is that we forget because the, the sample library has no lungs, that we forget that humans need to breathe. This is especially bad when we're writing for choirs. And I feel like the developers must have assumed that we wouldn't start with the notation software. I think they must have all assumed that we would start on paper and then engrave it once we were done. And that's just not always the case. One drawback that has gotten me in trouble multiple times is that you can accidentally turn on or off concert pitch and then your transpositions will be super messed up. And I guarantee you they will be figured out in the first rehearsal. All right, let's go through my hybrid workflow for my current project. First, I will usually start by sketching out an idea quickly on paper. I often work in like nebulous sort of shapes before I really know what it is that a gesture is going to sound like, and I definitely don't know any of the details yet. And then I can punch it into a recording software to hear it and then make decisions based on that, how to proceed based on the feedback that I get from the, the software. And from there, I can cycle through tempo options really quickly. Do I want it 71 beats per minute? Do I want it 72 beats per minute? Do I want it 68.5 beats per minute? No, I don't. So then I'll kind of constantly go back and forth between my different tools, whichever is going to be the most effective use uh, for what I'm trying to do. And I like to go back to paper for editing. I like to be able to hold a, a fully engraved score with proper notation. It's, it's much cleaner, it's easier to read, and I can also take a red pen to it. Okay, so two conclusions. I fully believe that all of us as composers should work constantly to develop our inner ear so that we can audiate things better in our heads. However, 
there are no extra points given out if you only use your ear. So use the resources that you have available to you. Second, all technology is just a tool, a resource. All of them are meant to help you achieve your artistic vision for your piece. All of them can and should be used. You just need to know the strengths and weaknesses of each of them. So what are your thoughts on composing on paper versus on a computer? How do you use both of them in your process? Let me know down in the comments. And if you've been getting stuck on some of your pieces, I recommend this video here.